What are the most common ways that plaintiffs with a legitimate case mess up their case? And also, I should be reading questions before I read them out loud. Like, <laughs> not very intelligent of me to just read things like it's a teleprompter. People get me to say anything. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, there, there's definitely plaintiffs who don't listen to their attorneys. Um, there's plaintiffs who like believe, like th there's some people on the channel who are like, oh, give us case law, give us case law. You're worthless unless you give us case law. And then they'll also post things about like what the case law means that don't track and like are not stated correctly. So like, there's people who like overestimate their ability to work with the case law. Uh, I don't give case law on the channel because I don't believe people on the channel can work with case law. It's it's a difficult thing to do. It takes some training. Like pro se litigants are generally not going to have much success, uh, much success like dealing with the case law and structuring arguments based on uh, case law and precedent. Like that is probably one of the few things that you could argue like you actually need a training as an attorney to do in litigation. Um, so that that's common. There's a lot of plaintiffs who get the greedies, right? There's there's a lot of plaintiffs who are like, you're like, hey, Jake the plaintiff, I, I got an offer of 300K for you, but I think you should hold that for 500. I think I can get you 500. Just give me two more weeks. Like, I don't want you to take 300. I think I can get you 500K. And Jake the plaintiff's like, uh, or you could fuck yourself. I want 40 mil. And you're like, Jake, you wouldn't, you'd have, you'd have to live 200 years to earn 40 mil. Like that's a 200 year multiplier on your, your average yearly earnings. He's like, well, but, but I'm sad. Okay, Jake, the plaintiff, but you, you don't treat provincial health and, and you, you you don't talk about like, what are you talking about? Like, we can't substantiate that. Like you want 200 million emotional damages for what? Because, because somebody was mean to you. Like, I'm not saying there's not something there, but I am saying it's not 200 mil or whatever it is, 40 mil, whatever, whatever the, the, the number at that point gets ridiculous. And it's meaningless. Right. Um, so getting the greedies is like a major like thing that happens to plaintiffs. And it's one of those things where you just have to be like, okay, so like, they're not going to give you that. We can try the case. Um, you're embracing the risk of trial. And then often uh, the person who had the greedies will like be two years down the line going to trial. And they're like, why don't I have money yet? Like, well, because you, you refuse to take money. Like, I, I think I could have gotten you 500K two years ago. But uh, you said, no, that's why you don't have money yet. And they're like, you're a bad attorney. You're bad. I should have my 40 mil by now. It's like, there is no 40 mil. Like the jury, even if you win, you're not getting 40 mil. Like that's not going to, that cannot happen. Realistically speaking, that cannot happen in your case. You do not have a $40 million case and you're engaging in self-harm by deluding yourself to believing that. That's, that's a major, that's a major misstep for plaintiffs that happens all the time.